Miss Winchelsea was going to Rome. The matter had filled her mind for a month or more, and had overflowed so abundantly into her conversation that quite a number of people who were not going to Rome, and who were not likely to go to Rome, had made it a personal grievance against her. Some, indeed, had attempted, quite unavailingly, to convince her that Rome was not nearly such a desirable place as it was reported to be, and others had gone so far as to suggest behind her back that she was dreadfully stuck up about that Rome of hers. And little Lily Hardhurst had told her friend Mr. Binns that so far as she was concerned, Miss Winchelsea might go to her old Rome and stop there. She, Miss Lily Hardhurst, wouldn't grieve. And the way in which Miss Winchelsea put herself upon terms of personal tenderness with Horace and Benvenuto Cellini and Raphael and Shelley and Keats. If she'd been Shelley's widow, she could not have professed a keener interest in his grave was a matter of universal astonishment. Her dress was a triumph of tactful discretion, sensible but not too touristy. Miss Winchelsea had a great dread of being touristy, and her Baedeker was carried in a cover of grey to hide its glaring red. She made a prim and pleasant little figure on the Charing Cross platform, in spite of her swelling pride, when at last the great day dawned and she could start for Rome. The day was bright, the channel passage would be pleasant, and all the omens promised well. There was the gayest sense of adventure in this unprecedented departure. She was going with two friends, who had been fellow students with her at the training college, nice, honest girls both, though not so good at history and literature as Miss Winchelsea. They both looked up to her immensely, though physically they had to look down, and she anticipated some pleasant times to be spent in stirring them up to her own pitch of aesthetic and historical enthusiasm. They had secured seats already and welcomed her effusively at the carriage door. In the instant criticism of the encounter, she noted that Fanny had a slightly touristy leather strap and that Helen had succumbed to a serge jacket with side pockets into which her hands were thrust. But they were much too happy with themselves and the expedition for their friend to attempt any hint at the moment about these things. As soon as the first ecstasies were over, Fanny's enthusiasm was a little noisy and crude and consisted mainly in emphatic repetitions of Just fancy! We're going to Rome, my dear! Rome! They gave their attention to their fellow travellers. Helen was anxious to secure a compartment to themselves, and in order to discourage intruders, got out and planted herself firmly on the step. Miss Winchelsea peeped out over her shoulder and made sly little remarks about the accumulating people on the platform, at which Fanny laughed gleefully. 